my name's Lindsay Davidson um, and I've got two boys with Duchenne muscular dystrophy aged six and three. My name is Ravi Mehta, I'm 26 and I have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. You know, in the beginning it was quite difficult but you know I've been used to this for like 26 years now so you know I'm quite used to how it works. So Duchenne muscular dystrophy is the, the most common and best characterized form of muscular dystrophies. Um, what's special about it is the mode of inheritance. It normally only affects males because it's inherited through the X chromosome. The disease is particularly devastating because it's uh, more progressive than many other muscular dystrophies. The life expectancy is limited. Um, boys normally are diagnosed at around five years of age, four years of age, will then lose their independent ambulation at around you know, 10, 12 years of age and will become wheelchair bound. Um, unfortunately, the disease further progresses and many of them die within their 20s. I think, I, I think Robert's probably too young to have noticed much about it and he's quite strong at the moment, but I think he will get frustrated, very frustrated when he can't do things. Angus has adjusted quite well, although he does get very frustrated that he can't run like his friends, he can't jump, he can't keep up with them. But obviously, it's, at the moment, he can still do certain things, but when, when he's unable to walk, then I imagine it will, it will become more and more frustrating for him. Everything gets checked every six months. Um, as well as the physiotherapist, we've got the, got the specialist nurses who can, can offer you some you know, emotional support. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is one of the most progressive conditions that we deal with and physiotherapy is very, very important for these children. And it might be a simple exercise such as stretching the tendo Achilles on a regular daily basis, that is all they have to do. But if they don't do that, then there are problems that can arise as a result. So even simple exercises are really very important for children with Duchenne. As they get older and the contractures become more severe and the muscle weakness becomes more pronounced, then we have to help them even more to make the best of what they have. And sometimes that might mean advising them on the best wheelchair or using different orthotic devices to make them walk for longer or to make them able to stand when perhaps they couldn't. All patients with neuromuscular disease, and in particular those with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, require a holistic approach to care. This holistic approach to care not only includes respiratory, cardiac, nutritional, urological, orthopedic, excellence in physiotherapy to support the patients both from a musculoskeletal point of view as well as a respiratory point of view and this needs to be carried out as a regular occurrence in order to maintain the patients in a good clinical state. I'm not able to walk or can't lift my arms or pretty much do much with, without help so I'm always needing someone to kind of assist me to move and you know, move my arms and all that kind of stuff. Duchenne muscular dystrophy affects the cardiac performance and so we need to maximise our surveillance of these patients both in terms of respiratory function and also cardiac function. As regard looking after the respiratory muscles, we will monitor their breathing at night time and there may become a point where the breathing at night is insufficient and therefore requires the use of non-invasive ventilation. I use the ventilator all night, so, you know, in the beginning, I've had it for like 12 years or so. I'm still kind of getting used to it after all that time. Muscular Dystrophy UK has information fact sheets on over 60 different types of muscle wasting conditions. We also have information fact sheets for health professionals who support people across the UK with muscle wasting conditions. We also have different ways that we can put people in touch with others who share experiences for peer support. The advocacy um, team at the charity really do help people to secure the equipment, the adaptations and the financial support that they're entitled to. 
If people want to contact the Information Advocacy Service, they can call our free phone helpline, which is open Monday to Friday, 8.30 until 6 o'clock. They can also email us. We also have a really helpful online forum called Talk MD, which is run by people who live with muscle wasting conditions, and that's open 24-7, so you could post in there and ask for some peer support. The importance of having a Duchenne muscular dystrophy alert card is that we can highlight to the local clinical team the issues that these patients suffer from. On that card it has all the relevant information so they don't give you the wrong kind of medication. They know what kind of, like, not to put in the anaesthetic and quite a lot of medical kind of data on there so you know, nothing will, untoward will happen to you. It literally could probably save your life. Muscular Dystrophy UK fund um, research which effectively will hopefully in the future, if, if it doesn't find a cure, it will find more effective treatments for the condition. Uh, there's been a lot of research uh, going into Duchenne um, in, um, over the, the past couple of decades since the, the gene was actually discovered. Uh, and um, at the moment, um, there are several clinical trials going on. Uh, there's a lot of hope now. There's so many different uh, avenues that researchers are trying to explore and trying to get through to clinical trials. Uh, and it's all looking very hopeful from that perspective. We hope that by providing peer support information and advice to individuals that they will be able to live well with their condition. I prefer doing things that everyone else does so you know, I try not to make a barrier just because I'm in a wheelchair so you know, I won't sit at home and don't go anywhere. I will go out as much as I can. You know, kind of try and live life to the fullest. <laughs>